All right. Um, so far, what we did in the last video was really just get the framework in place to allow us to um, store uh, the scoreboard text in the data store, the Norm Core data store, which will allow it to be synced to all the clients um, and have it so um, when the scoreboard uh, text variable within the model uh, is updated um, or changes, it will basically update the, the display, um, the scoreboard um, UI in the game. But what we don't have is the logic to allow us to um, retrieve all the scores from the individual players um, and then use that to use that information to update the scoreboard text. Before we get into that, there is one method we need to add into our player data script from a previous video, and that is a method that will allow us to return uh, the current score uh, that's attached to that player. So let's just go into our player data script that, we've, that we have from before. And we're going to create a new method here. And because we want this method to be uh, accessible outside of the script, we're going to set it up as a public. And this method is actually, the whole purpose of this method is just to return a value. Uh, so we're not going to use the, the term, the keyword void. We're going to actually put in, in an integer. And we'll call this uh, get score. And all that we're going to really use is this return a value model player score. So we're going to use this method uh, from inside our scoreboard text to get uh, the player score that's attached to each avatar within the game. So let's go ahead and save that. And we can jump back to our scoreboard script to finish off the logic that we need. All right, so let's, we're going to create a new method here. Um, and we're going to create a method that actually will set um, the scoreboard text. So we'll call it set scoreboard text. And um, one thing we're going to need to do, we are going to loop through all the avatars that are created. And earlier we created, um, in a previous video, um, a reference um, to a real-time avatar manager that we're going to connect in the inspector. The avatar manager, like I mentioned before, is a dictionary that every time an avatar joins or leaves a game, it keeps track of that. And so we'll be able to loop through the avatars within the avatar manager uh, and be able to drill down to find um, uh, the player data script and access each individual player's score. So what we're going to do first off is add a couple of lines before we just create our loop here. So what we're going to do is create a integer uh, player ID and set that to zero. Because we set this integer, uh, initialize it within this method, it's only accessible from inside this method. Um, and what we're the reason we're doing this is because right now, if we were to loop through the dictionary, um, it's very similar to an array where the first index is zero, the second is one, and so forth. Uh, we want to use um, some of this logic to allow us to have the scoreboard say player one, put their score on the scoreboard, player two, etc. Right now, um, it's going to say player zero, which doesn't really make sense. So we've created this um, integer um, called player ID that we can use to control some of the output. The other thing that we want to do is we want to, every time this method is called, we, we want to reset the value of scoreboard text and build that through this method. So we're going to go ahead and go underscore model dot scoreboard text just equals nothing. Clear that string out. All right, so let's go ahead and set our loop up. Um, We've worked with for loops before that uh, go for i equals zero, i is less than or greater than, or less than or equal to um, array length, i plus uh, plus. We can't use that approach here because if we were, what would happen is, let's say you have a player one join the game in the index or the, in the dictionary, it's player zero, and then another player joins the game in the index, they're player one. If player, the first player leaves the game, all of a sudden there is no zero item, the key is broken, um, and it won't be able to loop through. So we're gonna use something called a for each loop. And what we're gonna do here is go var item. We could put it to be whatever we want. We could say x, var, x, var, whatever. Um, kind of the standard practice is var item. And then we're gonna say in underscore array, or sorry, avatar manager. And to get to the actual dictionary of, of avatars, we're going to go dot avatars. And what we're going to do here first off is we're going to start to, we're going to go ahead and set what the value of player ID is. So we're going to go player ID 
equals item. So item is basically the um, index or the item within your avatar array. Um, and when you're working with dictionaries, they use an item called or an idea, idea called keys. Uh, so we're going to go dot key, which is basically, in this case, it's 0, 1, etc. And we're say plus 1. And the reason is we're going to use this player ID to output for our scoreboard the player, um, player 1, player 2, etc. Let's go ahead and start to build out our scoreboard text. I'm going to go mo underscore model dot scoreboard text. And because we want to build this up uh, through the loop, um, we're going to go plus equals. If I just left it as equals, each time it looped through the um, the avatar manager, uh, it would basically overwrite. So we don't ever see one. So we're going to go, go ahead and say plus equals. And we're going to start um, putting the string player, put a space. We'll start to build this string up and we'll say player ID colon. So right now, if we look at this, it's going to output in, uh, if we've got five players playing, it'll say player one player two etc uh in our scoreboard text but we, now we need to actually get the value um that we want to be attached to that for that score for each player so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to go and tap into our avatar manager dot avatars we want to get uh the first item in the in the uh avatar dictionary so to do that we're going to go item dot key which will pull uh the first item, the second item, etc. And what we're doing is we want to drill down to where the actual script is. So if we take a look, just jump back into Unity for a second here. If we take a look at the let's see if I compile the avatar itself. So here's the avatar. We're drilling down to where this script is. In this case, it's on score text. We have this script called uh, player data script. We want to actually drill down um, to the avatar um, to this particular component. So what we're going to do is we're going to go dot game object dot get component in children. Um, we're not going to get components in children because we know there's only going to be one. And the component that we're going to want to get is player data script. And we should be able to now access um, that method that we created earlier, which was get score. There's the get score method. So if we just kind of take a recap, what's happening here is oops, we're starting to build. Each time it loops through, if we've got five players, it will loop through five times. It'll get their um, pl player ID that we've incremented by one. So instead of saying player zero, it'll say player one. Uh, we're drilling down to the player data script for each individual player and access, accessing that new publicly created method called get score. But now thing, one thing we need to still do is uh, we need to add a line return because right now if we just were to end uh, this code here with a, oops, a semicolon, uh, it's just going to output that in one line. We actually want to kind of have it wrap so that it will... Um, Start a new line with each player. So we're going to add one other item here to the end of this line here. We'll go plus. And what we're going to add in is uh, backslash n, which basically um, is the same as adding a line return. Oops. Okay, so now with the script, the scoreboard will uh, be updated. Um, every time this method is called, it will... Uh, loop through all the players, get their score, and update the scoreboard with the new scores. But one thing that we're, we're still missing right now is we want this to, this method, this, this set scoreboard text method, and the update of the scoreboard text to, to be fired every time a player leaves or joins the game. And right now we don't have that. Um, if we take a look just at some of the norm core uh, documentation, so we've used a little bit in the script this idea of the real-time avatar manager. Uh, if we take a look at some of the methods and, and events that are available, um, down here at the bottom we see there's a couple of events that are available, one called Avatar Created, one called Avatar Destroyed. Uh, again, an event is something that can get fired, and you can have um, some logic listening for if that event is fired, and then carry out particular tasks. All right, so let's take a look inside uh, the solution for that keyword Avatar Created. 
Uh, so here we can see inside the real-time avatar manager script it, it did get found. So let's take a look here. So here we've got um, this event or this method avatar created and it's trying to pass um, the reference to the avatar manager, a particular avatar, and a boolean um, basically if this um, client is is part of the real-time client or real-time system. So we can use this as a guide for what we're going to need to do. Let's jump back into our scoreboard script and leave this real-time avatar manager script open. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and just scroll up here. All right, we want to create a method that will get fired every time there's an avatar added or removed from the game. Let's go ahead and create that method. We'll call it avatar changed update score. So every time there's a change in the avatars, uh, we want the score to be updated. Um, because this method is going to be um, a delegate or kind of connected to the event um, avatar created or avatar destroyed, let's just take a look back inside the real-time avatar manager. You can see that the avatar created method um, is got a couple of properties here. So this references the real-time avatar manager, um, this is the avatar itself, and then um, a boolean indicating if the client is part of the real-time system. So let's go ahead and we'll use this as a guide. Let's go ahead and create our method here. So what we can do here is we can just create real-time avatar manager, go avatar manager. We'll just go real time avatar. And we'll say avatar. And we'll go bull is local avatar. All right, and all we need to put inside of this method is basically um, a call to our set scoreboard text method. So we'll just put that in here, set scoreboard text. Now we want this method to be called anytime there's an avatar created or an avatar destroyed. So we're going to create a, another method just above that. Um, we'll use the on enable. So when this, uh, the game object that the script is on is activated within the game, uh, this method will be fired. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go underscore avatar manager, uh, again referencing the um, avatar manager we, we created up here. We'll go dot avatar created, and we're going to connect that uh, event to the method we created down here, avatar changed update score. And we'll do the same thing for the avatar destroyed. So what we've done here is as soon as this game object is enabled within the scene, uh, we've connected these two events um, and delegated them to this method. So anytime there's an avatar created or an avatar destroyed, this method will get called, and that method will then call the scoreboard text. So what will happen is if we had a change and an avatar, a player left, um, it would be triggered because it's avatar destroyed. It would loop through the avatar managers or the avatars within the avatar manager, and it would update, and we'd see that that player was removed from the scoreboard. In our next video, we'll take a look at kind of pulling all this together and allowing us to have a player score by hitting the, the target or the goal and then have that uh, action uh, update the individual player score within their, their player data script um, and then have that also update the scoreboard as well. All right, so now we have our script built and we just still need to add it to a game object within our scene. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and add it to, there's, the, there's a text UI element um, as part of the scoreboard. We're gonna go ahead and add it to that. So let's expand scoreboard container and drill down uh, to that. So there we can see scores. 
Let's go ahead and add uh, that new script to our game object here. And we're looking for scoreboard script. And we'll notice that when we added that script to our game object, it brought in some of the norm core uh, scripts that are required for that. Let's go ahead and just deselect owned by creating client. And we'll notice that there is a public field in the inspector that we created in the script for avatar manager. We just need to wire that up. So let's go ahead and select the real time uh, plus VR player game object and let's just drag that onto the field there. So all ready to go now. If we hit play and test this, what we should see is um, in the scoreboard after it's connected to norm core, it should update and say player one with a score of zero. So let's go ahead and try that out. So there we can see that it automatically updated and if we had another client join the game it would say player 2 with a score of 0. In the next video we'll take a look at wiring this all up and adding in some of the logic to allow us to throw a ball at these targets and have, the, um, have that collision then update the score for each individual avatar which will then in turn update the scores we see on the scoreboard.